Prototyping and testing, two of the most important things that you can do as a UI and UX designer. Also, two of the most commonly skipped steps in the product design process. Watch out, shots fired. The reason it's most commonly skipped is because it's expensive, it's time consuming, it's hard to do. People think you have to do big, fancy, expensive, eye tracking, user focus group studies, and you don't have to do that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a simple way that you can prototype and test in less than 10 minutes. It's gonna cost you $0. Before we get too far, this video is sponsored by Career Foundry. Career Foundry is an amazing online school that you can get certified and take an online course for UX design. It's an amazing opportunity. We're going to talk more about that in the video, but for right now, let's jump in and start prototyping. Okay, I have Figma open and I have a project that I've been working on, which is a hotel booking application. Now, this is a massive application with lots of other screens. It's an already built, already established application, but we want to add a new feature. We want to add a feature where users can write reviews on their previous booking experiences that they've had. Pretty cool, right? Write a review, let other people know how it went so they can book that place too. And we're not showing everything here. We're not showing 50, 60 screens and letting the user really like go through everything. That's the first key point of our test is we are gonna kind of limit it a little bit. We're not gonna provide them the entire app and hope they do their best. They're gonna hit some dead ends. That's what we want. We want them to hyper-focus. So it's intentional that we actually have fewer screens on our project canvas right now. We have our home screen, like we said. We also have our booking screen that can hit over in our global navigation right here, and that will allow them to see our upcoming and finished bookings, or their upcoming and their past or finished bookings. And uh, then they can write a review, they can get a confirmation once they press that, and there is also another screen just to throw a little wrench in their gears, just to throw them for a loop, where they can go over and check out the favorites. Now, here's the thing. We're making a hypothesis that our users are going to be able to find the place where they can write a review. Where is that place located? It's inside the booking. So they're going to have to go from our homepage into our bookings tab, move over to the finished or completed bookings, find the write a review button, click it to move into the write a review process. That's the start of our flow, end of the flow. That's what we're testing today. Is it gonna work? We'll find out, we'll see. We'll see if they can find that button. What we're gonna do is look at the height of the rest of our artboards. It is at 812, we're rocking an 812 height, which is great. That means I need to bring my global navigation and my pull bar, uh, my iOS pull bar and bring it all the way up here so we can kind of see it. And we don't wanna put it in other uh, sort of sections or other sort of frames. We just want to make sure it's up there. We're going to hit this uh, height. It's like 1854 right now. We don't want that. We want it to be 812 pixels high. Whoop. That just shrinks the entire artboard up. And now let's grab our navigation and we'll just pop that down at the bottom. Okay, let's just zoom in really quickly so we can see what we're working on here. We just want it to be anchored right at the bottom like the other one is. It has an active state on it, has a different active state on the other one. This is pretty good. All right, now that we've shrunk our artboard up, the first thing we're gonna do is press play and we'll be redirected to the preview screen in Figma where we can see our prototype. Now it's not gonna do much because we haven't linked anywhere we can click. I can't even actually scroll anywhere. I can't do much of anything. So let's give this screen some initial interactivity. All we have to do is go up to the artboard itself, up to the frame, and we're over on the prototype tab now, not on the design tab, but the prototype tab. And we're gonna say we want some overflow scrolling because there's content that's sitting outside of the container of this frame. Well, what happens with that overflow content? We want to tell Figma to do a little bit of horizontal scrolling. You can do horizontal, vertical, uh, horizontal and vertical and do some sort of interactive maps. But for us, just vertical scrolling is going to work great. That will allow us to actually scroll past the span of all that content. Now, here's the problem is our navigation is all sorts of wonky. It's in the wrong spot. So we're going to have to grab these items and go back to design. And let's just make sure that we fix position when scrolling. Now we have a bottom anchored navigation and we have all that content overflowing and scrolling. That's really nice. That's exactly what we want. From here, we want to be able to click over to our other screen. So let's just grab our favorite screen and put it on this side. We'll handle all of this kind of navigation right now. All we're going to be doing here is creating basic screen to screen instant transitions for our main navigation. We'll also move up to our segmented control and we'll click back and forth between those 
with basic instant transitions as well. So you can see here, we just need our user to find that writer review button. This is one spot where we'll do a little swipe up kind of animation uh, to get into our writer review screen. And then we'll do one fancy smart animation to bring that confirmation screen up with just a little bit of hit of dopamine. From there, we'll be ready to move on. Open up our prototype and see how it works. We have our scroll happening. That's really good. We can go back and forth between bookings and explore and favorites. Once we're on bookings, we can toggle back and forth, find write a review. We can write that review and get a nice gentle confirmation. That's it. We're all done. All right. That's some simple prototyping. You might be saying, okay, big deal. But where's the testing part come in? I'm going to show you a method of testing right now. But before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit more about Career Foundry. Career Foundry has a UX design program that actually takes you from a complete beginner to job ready professional in the UX design industry. They help you, they guide you, they teach you, they train you, and they actually help you get your very first job in the field. I really love Career Foundry. I think they're offering something really special and really cool if you are interested in learning, growing, and getting hired in the UX design industry. Right now, Career Foundry is offering you an amazing opportunity. That's their New Year's scholarship program. $1,500 off the entire cost of the curriculum, of the course, of the platform. That's a massive savings, but it only lasts till the end of January. So jump on it now. If you're not sure if the Career Foundry UX program is for you, you can actually talk to a program advisor. You can speak with somebody, ask lots of questions, get tons of information to help you make the decision before taking the leap. And even after all of those opportunities, if you're still not sure if UX design is right for you, Career Foundry has an amazing free introduction to user experience design course. You can actually put yourself in the shoes of a UX designer in a few short interactive tutorials. It'll get you going and let you know if it's the right direction for you. So definitely check out Career Foundry. All the information is down in the description. Take advantage of the amazing opportunity that's happening right now with their New Year's scholarship. And get on it because it's an amazing time to become a UX designer. The next thing we have to do is actually create our feedback mechanism and also the entry and exit point for our test. The entry point of our test is gonna let our users know you're about to take a test. Here's your goals. Here's what you're trying to accomplish. Our exit point is once the user has accomplished the test and we're gonna tell them what to do next, how to get to the feedback mechanism. So let's jump in and do that right now. All we have to do is create another artboard that's the same dimension as our other artboards, and we're just gonna borrow a little bit of typography. We're gonna pop it over here on our screen, and we're gonna say something like, welcome to the test. Their goals are there. Their little description is above. We could even, if we want to be really helpful, we could bring this down and we could duplicate this and say just, description right here. So when people read this, it's dummy proof. There's the description. There's the goals. Last dummy proof thing we need to do for them. So we need to create a big, ugly button to let them know that they that's where they click to start the test. Okay. Now we have a set of instructions. What are we going to do? We're going to head over to prototype and we're going to prototype this button over to the start of our prototype. And instantly they are going to be moved into our prototype. Great. What do we do after they are done though? We're gonna have a very similar exit screen or confirmation screen. Okay. So this is all that it needs to be. Now, after we've done this, we have our entry point, exit point. Let's talk about our feedback mechanism. All it is, is a simple Google form. That's right. We're going to head over to Google forms and I've created a really simple travel app feedback form and it has a couple of questions in there. You're going to want to fill this out with all the important questions that you need to actually make this successful. But I've created a couple simple questions using Google forms uh, just for this demonstration. Once I've created this form in Google forms, it's free to do. I'm going to hit send. I'm going to grab my link. I'm going to, uh, my link is right there. I'm going to shorten that URL and copy my link. Now that I'm back in Figma, I'm going to select my button, make sure I'm on my prototype tab. I'm going to create an interaction and say on click, what do I want to do? I want to open a link on the internet and I'm going to paste my link inside. Last thing we're going to do, we haven't set it up yet, is we're going to grab our artboard here and we're actually going to drag over and we're going to say on click, not on click, we're going to say after a delay. We'll say 800 milliseconds, that's fine. And we will just instantaneously move over. We also need to change our flow home over here to, we'll call this review. We're actually just gonna drag it over and place it on the entry point of our prototype or of our test. Press play and here we are. 
They get a series of instructions, the goals they need to do, and they're gonna hit the button at the end. Great, let's start the test. It moves me in. They can prototype around. They can check a few things out. They like it. They go over here to finish. They're actually able to find our write review button. They click it. They write their review and with a timed transition, it shoots them over. Congrats, you've completed the test. Next steps, hit the orange button and fill out your feedback form. When we do that, it's gonna jump us out of Figma. It's gonna give us the link and we're gonna jump right into our form where the user can start filling out our form, leaving us some feedback and submitting that feedback to us. Now, what's great about this is if you can get five, 10, 15, 20 users, you're gonna start collecting that feedback. And when you come back into Google Forms, it's actually gonna organize that feedback for you, right? So we get our responses and we can see, we actually graphed out for us how many people have filled out our form and given us feedback and what percentage of people enjoyed it didn't enjoy it, answered each of these questions. Absolutely fantastic. You can get a summary here. You can go question by question, or you can look at each individual's feedback that they gave you. Again, I know this seems super simple and ridiculous, but you can set up a test in under 10 minutes with an entry point, exit point, a simple prototype, and that feedback mechanism of a Google form, and you can get your users into that funnel so they can start giving you feedback, and you can do this so that you know that your hypothesis, you know that your solutions are right and have a lot more confidence behind it. Guess what? If it's not right, you go back to the drawing board, you do it again. Well, that's it. That's a simple method of prototyping and testing your designs in under 10 minutes, an absolute staple in the UX industry. If you want to learn more about UX design, check out all the links to Career Foundry's amazing UX design program down in the description. And thank you, Career Foundry, for sponsoring this video so people could learn about prototyping and testing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for another one by ringing that bell. I hope you had a great time, and I'll see you in the next one.